In this video, I'd like to talk about Microsoft Office 365 Groups. This is a great way for you to work with your team in a very easy and simple and intuitive way. Let me show you how. First of all, though, I'd like to explain the word groups. And over time, we've heard it maybe about three different ways. One, a group traditionally could have been in a distribution list, a contact group. Like maybe you start typing in the word marketing and marketing group shows up and you can send that whole group an email. Or within your Outlook, you have a bunch of your own contacts that maybe aren't part of your organization, but you've created a contact group with those people. Those are different kinds of groups. What I happen to be talking about today are Office 365 groups, or sometimes you'll hear them called modern groups. They're basically a service working with other applications within Office 365. Those tools exist, and what a group does is it reaches out and it brings all those cool tools that we have to use into one easy-to-use package. When you create a group, you choose a certain amount of people that you want to collaborate with, and you can easily work with them and you can share resources, and you can even share an Outlook inbox or a document repository, like some sort of document library, and you can collaborate on those files. You can have a shared calendar. Lots of very, very cool things that you can do. You can work with Outlook that's installed on your computer like this. Or you could work with Outlook Online. Look, that's the same thing. It's just within your browser versus the one that's installed on your computer. We can also use mobile devices. There are apps that we can download so that we can work with our group on the go. For me, one of the main benefits of using a group is that we don't have to manually assign permissions like we would in a traditional SharePoint situation. I create a group, I add people, and then they automatically get to use all these tools that are included. I'll take a moment to just give you an overview of how we can create a group in Outlook. Here we are with an Outlook on my computer. I can see all of my folders on the side, and this is what we would typically see when we're in Outlook. But if you scroll down a little bit over on the side, we can see groups that we're part of right down here. I'm part of an Office 365 sandbox and a sales team and a retirement party and project managers. And as you can see here, or imagine some of them are long-lived, like sales team, and some of them could be short-lived, like a team that's working on a special event for a retirement party. That's a short-lived one. Sales team, that one could go on indefinitely. Now certainly, we could go up here and create a new group and browse groups this way. That's absolutely fine, but I'm going to click here on Office 365 Sandbox. This is the one I'm going to show off today a little bit. And look, we still have an opportunity to create a new one or browse ones that are already existing. Now within this group, we can see it's a public group. That means anyone in the organization could search for it and they could join it. If you have a private group, they have to ask permission or you have to add them. And if we take a look, we have email, and we have a calendar. This is a shared calendar. We also have files. And these files live within our browser very much like SharePoint. Look at this. We have a document repository. We have all of these documents that live here. We can create new ones. And when I say we, I mean anybody that's part of the group. We can upload and we can sync to our computer, export, do a flow. Look at all this stuff. We can get alerts. So if somebody adds something, you could get an alert. Or if something has changed, you're in the know that way. And you can work with your team and be very aware there's transparency to what's going on within this group. Great way to communicate. Over here, we can see we have seven members, and there are the pictures of them. Click here and check it out. I can always add members. I have all of these people. And Dan is an owner, and I'm an owner as well. Take a look at this. I can click there. I can change my membership. And I can also remove myself or anyone else, for that matter, from the group or assign them an owner permission. Down here, I have a guest, and we can add people that are outside of our organization, which is really helpful. This could be some sort of vendor. This could be someone that we work with outside of our organization. And what they can do is be part of it. And these guests, like Tyler, for example, can get certain access to our group. The group owner would add them or they could be nominated by other group members, and then, of course, the owner would approve that. What happens is they receive a welcome email, and, and they can uh, check out calendar invitations, and they can have access to group files, and they can leave the group at any time if they'd like to. And even though they're external, they are allowed a lot of different ways to communicate with the group, but not everything. For example, they can't delete the group, and they can't create one or add or remove members. There are certain restrictions. They can't view the group calendar, for example, or make any modifications. But if the tenant admin 
makes it available, they can view and edit group files, and sometimes that's helpful. They also can't browse other groups that are within your organization, so there's some safety there. They're allowed to be part of your group, but not entirely within your organization. Again, there's some safety with that. Within a group, you have, again, this document repository. You have a OneNote notebook, but check this out. You also have a planner, which is a lighter version, a more intuitive, easy way to work with your team for project management type stuff. Without getting too much into it, we have different buckets and we have different tasks and we can assign these to people and we're holding people accountable and being a little bit more transparent. But a planner where a plan is included with your group. And by the way, if you create a plan, you also create a group. So all of these things are working really nicely together. I'm going to close this. I'm going to go back to the group. This is the online version. This is Outlook Online. Look, I can see the groups there as well. And if I make these go side by side, for example, in the browser and then on the installed version of Outlook, I can see that it's exactly the same. It really is, and that means I can access this from anywhere. And like I said, even on my mobile device. I'm going to maximize this and show this off a little bit more. Let's say I use Office 365 Sandbox a lot. I'm just going to right-click it and add it to my favorites. And that means I'm going to see it right up here on the top. And I don't have to scroll down and go find it. As you can see, there are a lot of cool things that we can do with groups. One last thing I'd like to show you is how well it integrates with the already installed applications on your computer. First of all, let's check out Outlook. I'm going to just create a new email, and I'm going to attach a file, and I'm going to browse web locations. I have OneDrive for business, I have OneDrive Personal, and I have SharePoint, but I also have group files. I can go to Office 365 Sandbox, find a document that I'd like to attach. I can share the link or attach as a copy, and then I can send it off. I have this document, which is on my OneDrive. I can see that up here on the top. But what I'm going to do is file, save a copy. I'm going to go to my SharePoint sites and check it out. There's the Office 365 sandbox. I'll put it right there in my documents, and I'll save it. Now when I go back to my document repository in the Office 365 Sandbox, I can see that file right here. You'll need to figure out what works best for your group or your team, and take a look at all the advantages and how you can collaborate very well as a team with Microsoft Office 365 groups.